Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Well, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed to say this. It happened again. <laughs> I slept through the whole night. So for the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna say today and yesterday. I'm gonna try not to. I'm just gonna use the days, okay? So please try not to be confused, but I'm gonna explain this. So I am filming this on Saturday morning. This is actually the vlog that I should have filmed on Friday to post on Saturday, if that makes sense. Later today, I will be filming Saturday's vlog that I will be posting on Sunday, if that makes sense. Um, it is currently 8.09 a.m. I am extremely rested this morning. I fell asleep, I don't know, at like one o'clock in the morning. Um, but I'll tell you what happened in a uh, second. I'm getting ready to go through Starbucks to get my coffee. I'm like, well, I'm up for the day now, so I will. I might as well get my uh, coffee and start the day. So I can't believe this is the second time this week that I've done it, but um, it's whatever. I know that uh, most of you OG Wolfpeckers out there don't really care and aren't like, you said you were gonna do a video. I mean, I'm gonna talk about everything that happened yesterday, so it's still the same thing. Um, and I just was exhausted last night. So, if you don't know what you don't know, is a lot. Uh, but today, Saturday, is my husband Alex's birthday. It's his 35th birthday today. Happy birthday, Alex! And it's surreal to me because he was 20. How old was he when we started dating? 24 when we started dating. And I was 36, so he's almost the same age that I um, was when we started dating. Gotta get my coffee. Thanks for coming to Starbucks. How can we get started for you today? Um, can I get a Venti iced coffee with one equal and not a lot of ice? And you I have, have your own cup. And I have my own cup, yeah. And then she coffee with one equal, not a lot of ice, and we'll wait for your cup at the window. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of weird that it's his birthday. And it was yesterday, I don't know if it's on the heels of his friend having passed away, um, but he was having a really hard time yesterday. And he just was like, I don't know what it is about this birthday, but I'm really, um, like, I'm not feeling a whole lot. And he was like, but he seemed like he was feeling a lot. And I was like, are you sure you're okay? And he was like, yeah. And so for tonight, for his birthday on Saturday, he had planned that, it, like he didn't even really want to do anything for his birthday this year is what he was saying. And so he planned this birthday dinner, which for 20 people, that's now into, it's gonna be like 26 people. And um, my cousin had texted me, hold on just a second, put the card in park, what'd she say? <laughs> she just said, oh my God, you are up early. Um, and so, and then we're going out afterwards. So we, um, so last night I was like, do you want to, well, I had an ulterior plan. So Alex's mom and I had a little surprise birthday present that we had put together for Alex. And our plan was to give it to him last night at midnight. And, um, hold on just a second, let me get my coffee. I don't even know if I have enough money on my car. Right okay. yeah. Matthew, 3.32. How are you? Doing good. Did you receive today? I don't, but here's my cup. Thank you. There's like 50 people working in there. There's a few of us. There's a few of you in there. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Whenever I come super early in the morning, there's never anybody in there that I know. Okay, so 
uh, I, I'll just put, tell this part now, so because it'll make sense for the rest of it. Um, Alex had asked like two, three months ago from us that he wanted like a legacy video, if you know what that is, where people like, you have all these clips of people and um, you, like they each say something that it meant to him or that they, that he means to them. Well, I was like, okay. And I, I said to him, I was like, cause I had a special way that I wanted to do it. And I wanted to get it done really, you know, like I'm kind of a perfectionist about things like that. So I was like, okay, well, you know, whatever. And I acted like I wasn't gonna do the video, okay? And he was like, that's fine. And I go, you know, maybe for Christmas, babe, but that's like a long project. I don't, I guess it was maybe more like a month ago. And I was like, that's kind of like a long project. I don't know that I can get it done, yada, 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 right? And um, so his mom and I have been working on this thing. I literally, yesterday, I mean, I had people right down to the, I don't know what these people are doing. I had people white, right down to the wire, literally sending me their videos yesterday. I think it had something like 40 plus video clips, all the way from like his mom, his grandma, his aunt, his uncle, all of his brothers, the, the uh, Sebastian and Carlitos, um, his god, both of his godparents, um, I mean like, all of his college friends. I was like texting people and they were like, I'm getting on a plane. I'm like, what time do you land? Can I have the video? <laughs> so I was very proud of myself. I put it all together. Um, his mom wanted some song called, I'm never gonna get this song right, Suavemente. And it's a song that Alex used to dance to um, when he was a kid by Elvis somebody. So that was like the first part of the song. And then when he was like in high school, he and his cousin Maya used to dance to um, J-Lo's um, Let's Get Loud. And so I downloaded that. I had downloaded all this music and he got in the car the other day and it like immediately like started playing one of the songs. And I was like, he's gonna know. Like he's gonna be like, why do you have that song in your iTunes? And then when I met Alex, he um, and his two friends that we're still friends with today, but they, one of them lives here and is married and the other one moved to Texas. Um, well, Texas by way of New York. He, they loved that song by the Pussycat Dolls, When I Grow Up. And so I downloaded that and then the last song was about, um, like I, I had some J like stuck stuff about Jason, his friend that passed away. I had a video of them dancing in there, and then I did this uh, Rufus to Soul song, and that uh, he loves. And I had all these videos of us, or pictures of us, and then I had pictures of Pee Pee, like when the day that he got him, and the puppy, and then Boo and Tucker as puppies, and um, and then I had video clips where I had like interviewed the dogs and asked them um, like to say something to their dad, and then I ended the video, and then I even put like we like even like um, had like what do you call it um, banners at the beginning and the end that said stuff like this is your life and um, then the last picture was Alex like jumping in the air. I was very proud of myself. It came together very nicely. Now y'all know I'm not the editor of the world and it honestly looked like a video that you pay somebody to do. Alex's mom wanted to pay somebody. I was like I can do this <laughs> and what was so cool was okay so the whole thing was so funny because I had to go over I couldn't even talk about it on here because I was afraid somebody would like message him and be like Peter's working on this legacy video for you. We've been working on this for so long. So what was it? Wednesday, I went over to her house and um, so Alex and I have those location finder things on our phone and I was scared to death. He was going to be like, he was going to like, because there was like a period where he was texting me and I wasn't answering and I was like, I am so afraid that he is going to like look me up to see where I'm at and he's going to see that I'm at his mom's house. But he didn't. He had no clue, absolutely no clue we did this video. It was so cool. So anyway, um, I went over to her house on Wednesday. She had 118 pictures that she wanted to upload. I have like 30. So we had all these pictures that we wanted to put in there. Plus, at that time, we had like 20 video clips. And then the next day, I had like 20, I, I think maybe I had, we had like 50 video clips of people total. Um, the video ended up being 29 minutes long. And, uh, 
So she's like, how are we gonna get him over to his house? Well, he had asked his grandma to make him this cake that he hadn't had since he was a kid for his birthday. But he wanted it for tonight um, at the dinner. And so it was like this cake with these Maria these Maria cookies in them. I don't know, but we had this cake last night. I'm gonna tell you right now, I haven't I never had a cake like this. It was so delicious. And in all honesty, like some of the things that, some of the cakes they make, like I'm not a real big fan of uh, flan or flan or however you pronounce it. I don't love it. And they make it well. Alex also loves this Tres Leches cake. I did three milks cake. I don't love that. Um, I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it's not my favorite. But this cake, oh my God, it was so good. And I said to him, I go, what does your grandma call this cake? And he goes, I think just coconut cake because it has like, you know, shredded coconut over it or whatever. So his mom was like, how are we going to get him over here to show the video? And she's like, then I don't know how to get it up on the TV. And I was like, just don't even worry about it. I'll bring my computer. If we have to watch on the computer, we'll watch on the computer. And um, she's like, no, I want to watch it on the TV. And I was like, well, we'll figure it out. But she wanted it all queued up like when we walked in the house. So Fufu like helped her like because he wanted to be on the phone and watch the whole thing. So she told him, she was like, you need to come over. We're gonna do uh, this like uh, birthday cake thing. And he was like, well, why can't we do it Saturday or Sunday? Like he fought her on it. And he was like, Peter and I, because I told him, I said, let me take you out to dinner on Saturday or Friday, Thursday night, just you and I. And um, which that ended up being really cute. I'll tell you in a second. Um, and then I said that I can give you like your, your birthday presents. And he was like, okay. He was so tired when he came home yesterday from work. He was like, I don't know that I even want to go to dinner. And I was like, oh, come on, it'll be fun. And he was like, I know. He was like, we'll go to dinner. He was like, I just wish I didn't have to go over to my mom's house tonight. And then he was like, I guess I should be glad that my mom, I have a mom that like wants to give me cake and, you know, and I was like, that's exactly right. And he was like, it'll be fun. And he literally bawled through this whole video. Um, so he had, I mean, he literally had no clue. So we were going out to dinner last night. We went out to dinner. Um, on the way to dinner, Melissa calls me and she's at Urban Outfitters with Jason and they're shopping to buy something for Alex for his birthday. And she's like asking me, is he a large? And I was like, well, we're on our way to dinner at Cheesecake Factory. And um, she was like, oh my God. And I go, you guys should come and join us. So they came and joined us. So we had dinner with Jason and Melissa last night, which was a lot of fun. They're gonna be out tonight too. And, um, so I had a good dinner at Cheesecake Factory. I actually was standing there. Alex and I were standing there. <laughs> this girl comes in and she like looked at me and she goes, oh my God. And I go, hi. And like, Alex goes, hi. And I was like, and I thought it was like a friend of his. And she's like, you know, cause like, you know when people will come up and they see you and they're like, oh my God, I haven't seen you in so long. I thought it was like Alex's friend and he said he thought it was my friend. And she was like, oh my God. <laughs> And Alex goes, oh my God. And I, so again, I thought it was like a friend of his. And she's like, I watch all your videos. And I was like, you do? And she was like, yeah. And she was like, I was just watching. A, um, she's telling me what she was watching. But anyway, um, she was like, it is so weird. She was like, I knew you lived in Indianapolis. She was like, and I just, I never thought I would ever run into you. And she's kept on looking, she kept on like looking me up and down. And I go, is it weird to like see me in person? She goes, it is so weird to see you in person. She was like, she was like, I just didn't ever think that I'd see you in person. And it, she was so sweet. Her name was uh, Janae. And she was so, so nice. And um, so anyway, we stood there and talked to her for a couple minutes. She was so sweet. And, um, So then we ate dinner, and then we go, went over to his mom's house, and he was like so tired on the way. He was like, I just gotta, I gotta get in a better mood, but whatever. So we're sitting there, and his mother is like rushing to get to this video, right? And I'm like, just let me, I know how we're gonna do this, and blah, 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 whatever. And she's like, well, what do you wanna do? We're like whispering in the kitchen. And I was like, I'm gonna hand him some Kleenex and say this is what you asked for, because he had no clue. And I had even said to him last night, I said, you know, what would you have liked for your birthday? And he said, I mean, nothing. He was like, you were so like, because I got him like, you know, a couple gift cards and stuff. And so we could go shopping today. 
And he was like, you went like above and beyond. You didn't need to do that. And I was like, well, what did you really, I was hoping he would say the video and he didn't. And I get, and so I said to him in the car, I said, I know you really wanted that video. I just want to put it together right. And I said, and so I'll do it for you for Christmas. And he was like, yeah, no problem. You know, whatever. He was like, don't even worry about it. When I said, so she calls Fufu on the phone. <laughs> so she's, cause Fufu wanted to see his reaction. Well, I think he thought I got him a trip to San Diego. Because I said, because he said when he got in the car, he started laughing. He was like, I can't believe he said that. It was so funny. Because she's got Fufu on the phone, and she was like, Fufu wants to see your reaction to this. Well, Alex immediately starts bawling, right? So now I guess we got to go to San Diego. And um, I go, and he goes, um, and I said... So, we, your mom and I, have, no, no, I said, your mom and I have a little birthday surprise for you that we haven't given you yet, and he literally started bawling, and I go, and it's not a trip to San Diego, and they all started laughing, and, um, and then I handed him the little memory card, and he goes, what's that, and I, and I handed him some Kleenex, and I said, it's the video that you wanted, and I thought he was gonna lose it, and, um, so we sat down and we watched it all as a family. We turned the lights off and she had it on the big screen TV. And because Fufu had helped her like cue it up. And, um, you know, it, I, I like to sit there and see like 40 plus people tell you how important you are. Like I really had a hard time making the video. I was like such a bawling mess all day yesterday. I actually was looking at my Peterisms video while I was filming it and I was like, your eyes are straight up red in this video. Cause I've been crying. Like I had been crying so hard cause I was working on this video like any chance I got that he wasn't in the house, you know? And like looking at all the pictures and picking pictures out for the last 11 years, you know? And I was like, I mean like we've been together 11 years. Like that is a long time. Like we've lived a life in 11 years and like, all the people that have like come and gone, you know, in our lives, like all of his college friends, most of them like live far away now. And, um, it just was, you know, we are so blessed to have such wonderful people in our lives and that we have had such a wonderful life, you know, we just really, really are blessed. And, um, This song that I picked is kind of he and I's song about from Rufus to Soul. And um, so I started the pictures off like um, the very, so the very first picture that we ever took together, which I still have. And it was uh, the week after we started, well, it was like three days after we started dating and he was in Chicago. And so I went up there, I've told that story on here before. And um, he was up in Chicago with his brother and his brother's girlfriend at the time. And so I went up there and met him. And, um, so I literally, I put like all these pictures, like up till now, you know, like one for each year and like the music was building. And when I was picking the pictures, it was just like, I don't know. Some of our, our friends said such wonderful things and just such beautiful things about him, you know? And to like see these videos and to see people so excited to spend their birthday with him and the impact, you know, and like so many of them said like you and Peter, you know, and just to see like, I think sometimes we forget, um, I think it's sad, you know, that we have to wait until our own funerals to know that maybe anybody has been affected by us. Like, I remember going to my mom's funeral and it was like standing room only. Literally, balcony as well, the church. And I was just like floored. And I said my mother had no idea she had this many people that cared about her or something like that. And, um, you know, I think it, it was nice for him to see that I think he uh, questions that sometimes. And so I think it was nice for him to see how many people really, really love him and care about him. And um, and not have to wait until after we're gone, you know, because we don't really know that anyway, obviously, right? So that is what I have been working on for, feels like forever now. 
You guys, I'm telling you right now, if you saw the finished product, you'd be so proud of me, <laughs> knowing that I do not edit, okay? I don't edit, you guys, and I literally edited video clips, and I put the music over it, um, so I was so thankful. It was so funny because I was talking to Rich Lux and he knew I was working on this and I said, girl, I don't know how to put this music over. I, I've never used like music in a video before, right? And I said, I need help. I don't know how to put music over my video. And he goes, well, what music are you using? And at that time was when I was doing like that, I was getting the Jennifer Lopez. I was like, I'm doing this Jennifer Lopez role. So right now he goes, girl, he goes, they're not going to let you put a Jennifer Lopez song in a drama video. He goes, they'll copyright you. And I said, this isn't for a drama video. He goes, well, what's it for? And I go, um, it's for this legacy video that I'm doing for Alex. <laughs> he had no idea. He was like, he was so confused what a legacy video was. And I was explaining it to him, right? And he was like, like, Rich is honestly one of the most technological people I know. Like, he understands computers so well. And like, he explains stuff to me, like, literally in one second. And, um... Like, all the things that I know how to do on a computer is probably because of Rich, in all honesty. And, um... So, like, he taught me how to put receipts in my videos. And so, anyway, we were dri I was driving, and I was talking to him on the phone, and I said, girl, I don't know how to do this music, and I have to have music in this video. And he was like, it's real easy. Don't worry about it. And I go, well, what do you do? And he was like, you just open iTunes, and then you pull the music down, and you just lay it over your track. And he was explaining to me, like, you know, I mean, when you've used iMovie long enough, you kind of, you've screwed around with, I mean, I've screwed around enough with it to know, like, you know, what it is and whatever. So I called him yesterday and I was like working on the music and he didn't answer. And so I kept on calling him and he wasn't answering. And usually he'll like text me right away and he'll be like, hey, I'm filming a video or, you know, we're shopping or whatever, right? And so I look on his Instagram story and it's like four minutes ago and he and his assistant are like in his pool, like hanging out. And I was like, Okay, well, I don't want to bother him. He's, like, at the pool, blah, 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 whatever, right? I'm, like, I can figure this out. So, I Googled, and I was, like, how to put music on top of a video on iMovie. And there was literally, like, four-point directions, right? And I was, like, I followed it, and I did it. And I was, like, hot damn, I can do this. So, when I was talking to him last night, I was, like, girl, guess what I learned how to do today? And he was, like, what? And I said, I learned how to put music over my video. He goes, yeah, I taught you how to do that last week. He's so funny. But I was so proud of myself that I figured out how to do it and cut the music and lay a certain part of music over it. So basically, if you need me to make wedding videos for you or if you need me to do any kind of video for you, I'm, I'm your person right now, okay? Um, now I charge quite a bit because it takes me probably a little bit longer than everybody else. <laughs> but anyway, we had a great time. So we went over to his mom's house and then we had the cake. And then um, we watched the video and it just was really, really nice. But I had literally been working on this video all day long on top of making videos for all of my channels yesterday. And I had like this sober commitment in the early afternoon and I just was going, going, going all day yesterday. And I had to buy birthday presents for Alex with the gift cards. Um, but I had to go to the mall to get those for him. I got him a gift card from Nordstrom and a gift card from Urban Outfitters. And um, <coughs> so, yeah. It just was a long day yesterday. When we came home, we got home at like 1.15. And no, maybe, it, I mean, if, if it was any earlier, it was like right at 1. But I was like, I'm going to let, he was. He went right to bed. And I said, because he has a, um, a doctor's appointment this morning. The camera was at the end. He has a doctor's appointment this morning at 9 o'clock for Botox. <laughs> for his 35th birthday. So he's got that. And then he has a meeting from 12 to 2, a work meeting. Um, and then it feels like Saturday is Friday, isn't it? Um, and then, so he has a work meeting from 12 to 2 and then he wanted to go shopping afterwards. So he's going to go shopping afterwards because we were going to go to brunch today, but the, the meeting that he's having for lunch is like, he's excited about it. And they like, I guess they, it's like a lunch meeting and they bring in lunch and they're bringing in lunch from somewhere really nice. 
because I said to him, I said, are we still doing brunch? And he was like, well, I can wait and not eat at the lunch meeting. He was like, or we can go to brunch. And he didn't say anything. And I go, well, what is it? And he was like, well, I, like, kind of like, you know, like, are you, you not wanting to go to brunch? I mean, I wanted him to do what, exactly what he wanted to do for his birthday. And he was like, well, they're bringing in lunch from such and such place and something like that. And I was, he was like, I just, then I can eat lunch there. And I was like, well, okay. Well, I said, that's fine. I said, you know, if you don't, we can, we're going to have Saturday and Sunday to do brunch. I mean, we'll find other days to do brunch, you know? So, um, yeah, there was that. And then, um, so anyway, I, last night I laid down and I even said to him, cause I was so comfy and Boo Radley was literally like laying like right against my arm when I fell asleep. He was being so sweet. I could like feel him like his breathing going up and down when I was falling asleep. And I said, um, I said, I'm going to lay my head down for just a half an hour, but I didn't set an alarm because I didn't want to wake him up. And he was like, okay, babe. And I said, and hopefully not sleep through the night like I did the other night. And I really didn't think that I would, but I was, my eyes were really tired last night. So it was probably better that I slept through the night anyway, you know, and got a good night's sleep. But I am like up, I'm like wired for sound and it is 8.30 in the morning. But that's okay. I wanted to listen to some of my um, audiobook last night, that John Gacy book. I wanted to finish it by this weekend. Well, I think what I'm going to do now is when I go home, I'm going to start uploading this. I've literally been like in the dark here the whole time. I'm going to upload this and then, um, what was I going to say? I'm like wondering if I shouldn't go out this way. If maybe you'll be able to see me better. I think you will. Um, when I go home, I'm going to upload this and then I think I'm going to just make my videos and have my videos ready for the day. And then, um, do you ever like want to pull up and there's a car that like, they have like 10 feet in front of them in the next car and they won't pull up. This car like won't literally won't pull up so that I can get around them. Um, but then I think I'm going to go home and make my videos for the rest of the day. If I go back to sleep now, I'm afraid that I'll sleep till late in the afternoon and I don't want to waste the day. It is beautiful today. But I think it's going to be another chilly day. It's like 63 outside right now. I don't remember when I was a kid and doing like conditioning for tennis and stuff like that. It being this cold outside. I just don't. Okay. I had to uh, pull into the CBS here and change the battery. My computer had, uh, my computer, my uh, camera had died and I didn't even realize it um, until like the shutter thing went in because I had just kept on talking and it had stopped and I didn't even know it. And um, there's like a minute before like the whole camera like closes in. Do you know what I'm talking about? So anyway, I don't even know what I was talking about now. John Wayne Gacy book and but yeah I wanted to read a bunch of it yesterday I'm probably not going to vlog a whole lot longer anyway so um that I can get home and get this one started but I um have you guys seen those um I need my allergy medicine my throat is itching really really bad um have you guys seen those new VW buses that they have that are like electric? But they literally look like um, the Scooby-Doo gang van. They're like VW vans. Was that a VW van that they had back in the day? Um, if you Google them, um, they're like, they have one that's like blue and yellow. It literally looks like a cartoon drawing. I could not believe it when I saw it. I haven't seen anybody driving them. I haven't seen one of them yet, but they're discontinuing the um, the Beatles or whatever they're called. The Bugs, the Beatles or whatever they're called. They're discontinuing those as of this year, I think, is the last year they're making them. And um, so, which is kind of sad. I remember going to like, it's a small world as a kid, you know, like that it's a small world. Was that the one? Oh, no, no, no. The one where, maybe it was that one. I don't remember, but it was either at Epcot or Disney, and they would show, like, 
what the world would look like, you know, in 2000 or whatever, and it was like flying cars. And But what's interesting is that they would say, like, everybody's house would be run by, like, this computer system, which a lot of houses, people's houses are run by, like, iPads and stuff like that now, you know? And, um, I mean, we have a couple friends of ours who, like, have their lighting and everything, you know, like, on a computer, a little tablet thing that they would use. Um... You can record stuff from your phone, you know, for your DVR or whatever. But what's interesting is, like, we're not at a point where we have um, any kind of flying cars yet <laughs> that we're aware of, you know? Or you don't see them, like the Jetsons. Uh, you know, it's interesting when you think about progression like that. It's, you know, like, especially, like, scientific progression is, it's slow. So, as you age... It's like when you look at, you know, I was in high school in 1990 and it's, you know, 2019 now, so almost 30 years later when you look at it, yeah, there's a lot of things that are different. Like, we never had cell phones, you know? Like, I can remember my dad having, like, the bulky phone, you know, because he would always be on call, so he needed to. Like, yeah, we've come a long way since then, you know? Computers look completely different. Um, what else? I mean, there's just all kinds of things that look different. You know, the idea of like having a DVR even, you know, on your, on your, for cable. And we're so far past that now. There's so many things that are different technologically. You know, cars look completely different on the inside. But at the same time, like progression moves so slow, right? Like you, it's not like 1990 and then you wake up. It's like the whole idea of like back to the future. You know, the things that like look different, which in reality, what's so funny about the movie back to the future is it's more realistic than we gave it credit for, you know? Because it's not like, I mean, there's a flying car in that one, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I guess I thought, I couldn't really ever comprehend a time that we would have like, you know, you know when you watch those movies, I'm trying to think of an example, but like, literally it's like city on top of city on top of city and they're like, you know, there's really no ground. It's all like in the air and there's cars zipping by each other in the air and stuff like that. Like, I never really, and even sitting here right now, can't visualize a time that it's going to look like that on, while I'm alive, which is sad to say that part, you know, but I just can't. And, um, so I guess when I was like in high school, if you had asked me like, what do you think the world's going to look like in 30 years? I wouldn't have said anything any differently, you know? Um, like, I think it's really hard to kind of comprehend or even understand. Like, you know, I was reading this article on the computer, and it was like, I think it was on AOL or something stupid. I don't know. But um, this guy was like, there will be no oceans in 2050 or something like that. Or the world will be almost all ocean or something in 2050. I don't remember what it was, but that we won't exist the way that we exist today because of the way that, like, we're hurting the earth. Like, I'm trying to do more. Like, I was talking to, to uh, I thought it was this guy that I did the judging panel with, but I can't remember who it was I was talking to. And we were talking, I was telling, we were talking about, like, plastic cups and things like that and water bottles, and I was telling him about how I had, you know, gotten this and this, you know, that black lacot water bottle and I had a couple of them at home that I was trying to use and, you know, recyclable, sustainable, you know, trying to be more thinking of sustainability and not using plastic bottles and recycling and things like that. And he goes, oh, he was like, we started recycling a long time ago. And I was like, and he was like, you know, when you see the, was I just talking about this on here or was I talking about this last night with somebody? I, I think we were talking about it at dinner maybe. Um, Oh, yeah, because Melissa and Jason were talking about, like, how strict Melissa is with, like, the the um, recycling. That if she even sees a piece of tinfoil in the trash, she, like, goes crazy because it has to be in the... But Jason was telling me that, like, their trash to recycling ratio is literally, like, at the end of the week, they have, like, a little bag of trash now, and, like, the rest is all recycling. And you think about that. You think about all that we just... That we um, throw out, you know? So... Um, but I was talking to this friend of mine, 
I can't remember who the other person was, but I, I think it was this guy that I judged with. And I said, he was talking about how like they compost and, or something like that, or he wanted to compost and they had started recycling a long time ago. And I said, well, what was the change for you? And he said, you know, I was watching all these documentaries and <coughs> videos and stuff. And then I had kids. And when you start thinking about the fact that there's going to be no like real world left for your kids, you start thinking about the world in a completely different way. And he was like, you know, I know I might not be here, but my kids are going to be here. And what's that world going to look like for them? And he was like, and when you have kids, it, you, it's, it puts it in a different perspective for you. And I was like, you know, I had never really thought of it like that before. And um, so that was interesting to me, you know, that that idea of I think we're going to have to start thinking about the next generation and not our own. Um, I think we're really the majority of us, including myself at times, are a self selfish society. <laughs> that we don't really, like, I mean, if you, we don't think, like, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be here a hundred years from now, so why does it matter, you know? Which I guess is kind of an existentialist point of view, but... You know what I mean? Like, we, just, I think most of us just think, like, it doesn't really matter, we're not going to be here, so... But then I think there are people that really, really do care, too. It was funny, like, whoever mentioned this about composting to me, I've said it to, like, three other people. Like, I said it to Melissa and Jason last night, and they are like, oh, we want to start that, too. And, um... And I was like, well, where would you do it? And they are like, just behind our house. Like, we have some, you know, like, they have a lot of land behind their house. So they were like, that house is so pretty, I've never seen it. Because it's, like, set so far back. Um... So we were talking about that last night, like composting and stuff. And I think like each little thing helps. Whoever I got in the conversation with about recycling, we were talking about being a vegetarian and they asked me like, what was like the main thing about me being a vegetarian? And I said, well, I'm, I mean, I don't know that I'll be a vegetarian for the rest of my life. I might start it and stop it tomorrow. And they're like, well, why did you start it? And I said, well, for a couple different reasons. But I had seen this video, and in the video they talked about one of the ways to help erase your carbon handprint or handprint on the world is by being a vegetarian. Because... Um, it's not just about the animals, you know, it's, and it's not just about health issues. It's about the manufacturing of animal products and the farming of animal products and, um, you know, like the distribution. And when you talk about like, you're really lessening all of the things that are going into, um, the atmosphere and things like that by just help by just being a vegetarian for even 30 days, like, you really help that as far as, like, um, if, I wish I had this video. I thought it was a PETA propaganda video, but it's not, and I can't remember what it is, um, but there's so many things in this video about how, like, you really help with that, and I just was like, you know, I thought, I can do 30 days, and I said, and now I'm coming up on two years. You know what? I just remembered how we were having this conversation. And I don't remember. I think it was him. And I think it was we went to go eat at this restaurant while we were in the pageant. And they had an impossible burger. And we were talking about, um, God, who was it? Maybe it wasn't him. And we were talking about plant-based burgers and food. And he was like, is it really good? And I was like, oh, my God, the impossible burger is incredible. And he said, you know, the idea that we can grow from an entire, you know, field products that, you know, and replace that without, you know, having to like kill animals. And I said, I know it's crazy. You know, this whole idea of, of you know, being more plant-based and, um, my mom was real into all of that, you know? I mean, she wasn't a vegetarian, but she was really into... My mom always recycled. 
well, not always, but like, I mean, I remember her when I was growing up recycling and having another little trash bag, like a paper bag from the grocery store that she would put like all the recycling in. We were actually talking about this last night because Melissa was like, do you remember going to the grocery store and they would have that big trailer that you had to sort out like your glass and your plastic? And I was like, yeah, because I can remember my mom when I was growing up, she would have like, you know, in the garage, like right next to each other, she would have like one for plastic and one for um, glass. I don't remember recycling for paper when I was growing up, but maybe, you know. And I think it's just about being, you know, more thoughtful about all of that. And I don't know. When I left, Alex was dead asleep. I hope he's up for his appointment because he was excited about it. He was like, I haven't had Botox in forever. And I, um, he was like, I saw a wrinkle the other day for the first time. I'm like, you're 35, okay? You're not 75. Let's just be for real for a second. People are always like, are you anti-Botox or, you know, I don't know. But people are either like with Botox, they're either like really for it or really against it. So I've had Botox twice, I think. The first time I had it was six weeks before my wedding, which was in 2011. And I have to say that I think it drastically made a difference the first time. Um... It, like, I have a lot of natural wrinkles right here in my forehead anyway. Well, I have one, like, crease. And, um, so I got Botox before then. And then, like, two years later, another, I mean, you're supposed to get it, like, every six months, I think. But two years later or something, I got it again. I, I don't judge people for whatever plastic surgery or whatever they want to do. If you want it, have at it. I mean, why would I? My dad was a plastic surgeon when I was growing up. Um, my dad also said to me that he thinks that, like, 90% of people's cosmetic surgery needs are, like, um, psychological because only they can see it. Like, they can only see the difference. Most of the other people in the world don't even notice they've had it done. So it's about making themselves feel better. Which I think there's a lot of truth to that. But anyway, I got it done again. And the second time that I got it done, um, like, I had, like, my hair was grown out and I was a lot heavier than I am now, which I'm heavy now anyway, so, but, um, it, like, arched my eyebrows, and I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm getting that Botox look. Maybe I got it three times. I don't remember. I really don't remember. Um, I just remember it's painful as shit. People say it's not, and it feels like getting bee stings, little bee stings, and, um, my eyebrows started to arch, and I had that look, and I was like, no, I don't want this anymore. And I really kind of believe in aging authentically anyway. You know, I think it's, uh, I, I definitely think it's harder for women in society. Um, I get more compliments, physical compliments on how I, like my face looks now than I've ever gotten in my life before. My hair color to anything. And, you know, it's a real double standard in our society that I think men age gracefully, so to speak, is what they say, or look wiser, more experienced with wrinkles and white and gray hair. And yet women have to, like I saw it with my mom, you know? Um, but women have this need to constantly keep up. And I think it's this total double-edged sword in our society, or double, double, double-edged sword, du total double standard in our society, you know, that the women are held to a different standard than men are, and it's sad, um, and, like, I remember my mom always wanted to let her hair grow white, because she was like, I just don't want to deal with the color, because she got it colored, and she had, like, platinum blonde hair her whole life, and she was like, I just don't want to have to deal with getting it colored anymore, it's so expensive, and, you know, blah, 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 whatever, and, um, I said, Mom, and my ex, you know, used to do her hair, so she even, all she had to do was pay for, like, the color, I think. But anyway, I was like, you know, Mom, do what you want to do. And she's like, I know, but if I let my hair go white, she was like, it's going to really, really age me. And I was like, yeah, it really will. And she was like, do you really think it will? And I said, oh, yeah, I think overnight it'll age you, you know? I, 
that that's just the reality. If you go from platinum blonde hair to gray and white overnight, it's people are going to see you differently. I think there's also an idea that women now I've seen some women with like beautiful gray and white hair, right? But I think like there's this. I, I've heard people say this before, and I don't really know where it comes from, but there, there's the idea that women that have gray or white hair are kind of unkempt, you know, like, um, which I think is sad. I don't know. I think that's why we need, you know, I mean, to each his own, do what you want to do, but I just wish that double standard didn't exist. But that's why after that time getting Botox, I was like, you know what? I'm not getting Botox anymore, and I'm just going to let myself age and you know however I look is however I look you know my dad is a plastic surgery had the plastic surgeon has never had anything done not one thing has he ever had done and um, I mean I wouldn't say he looks his age but I, he looks older obviously and his hair turned like white and gray young too um, so by the time that he was my age he had completely white hair his my dad's hair is like white and very thick and um, and he has a white beard too. I mean, we look very similar. So, my mouth is itching. The roof of my mouth is itching so bad. Um, I don't know. Alex asked me one day, can't remember when this was. Um, I love this Xterra, the Nissan Xterra. I used to drive that car. It was one of my favorite cars I've ever driven in my life. Um, so if you're looking for a new car, the Nissan Xterra, um, they're like so basic inside as far as the radios and stuff like that. I I don't think they make them anymore, actually. Because I went and I looked and I saw a used one somewhere and I almost got it. But I wanted the bells and the whistles. Um, Alex asked me, he was like, would you ever consider getting any kind of like facial surgery or your eyes done or get a facelift like the older you get? And I said, um... Not right now, but I said I wouldn't rule it out. Like, if I felt, like, I'm not, first of all, I don't love the idea of hospitals and surgeons and doctors, which I think is funny. Um, and I've met a lot of doctors' kids that are like this, that don't like hospitals and all this kind of stuff, right? And I said, you know, I'm not trying to be in surgery if I don't have to. And he said, but you would get something done if you felt, I said, if I wanted to get something done, I get something done. I wouldn't feel bad about it. You know, like that's my prerogative. If I want to get my eyes done or a facelift, that's my business. And I said, why? And he said, cause I'm probably going to want to get some of that stuff done. And I just don't, I said, you can do whatever you want to do. I don't really care, you know, but I do think that that's a conversation you have with your partner, you know, when you're going to have like a facelift or get your eyes done or whatever, whatever kind of changes, I think. I didn't necessarily always feel this way, um, but I had a situation with a friend of mine, and um, <laughs> I'm like, I had a fr okay, so I had a friend of mine who, his partner of a very long time went and got a first tattoo, okay, and it was a large tattoo. And he was really upset about it. And he wasn't really upset about the fact that he got a tattoo. And he wasn't really upset about what he got a tattoo of, which was a lot. He was upset about the fact that they share their lives with each other and their bodies and things like that. And that he hadn't even discussed it with him. Like, I want to get a tattoo. And they were close, but they were having problems at the time. They're no longer together. And he was like, you know, I was really upset. Like, I feel like it was like he was keeping this intimate, personal part of himself that he shares with me and nobody else with me. Um, and it wasn't like a tattoo there. I'm not, it wasn't like that, but I mean, it was like on his back, you know? And it was like, but he was like, you know, he shares his body with me, but then, you know, he doesn't like have a conversation with me about how I feel about it. He was like, I wouldn't of course say no. And I don't think it's my place to tell him no, to not get a tattoo. But I do think out of respect, you share that stuff with your partner. And you know, the more I thought about it when he was saying that, like I, and I wasn't even in a relationship at the time that this happened. And I was like, I kind of agree with him, you know, like, I don't know, like I, like, if Alex was going to go get something done, I definitely would want to know. And it's not my place to tell him yes or no. It's my place to support him and what he wants to get done. And, you know, it, make him get second and third opinions about things, hopefully, and do it in a, you know, a good way. But I think to be 
in on that decision making process and go to the doctor's appointments and stuff like that I think is important you know to be part of that I don't know this was a big tattoo okay it was huge it was like over half of his back so this wasn't like a little tattoo so when I when you guys were like yeah I mean if it was like if Alex came home from a weekend with Sarah his best friend since I, way before me and was like Sarah and I decided to get like our initials on our wrists okay I wouldn't be real offended by that I just want to make that clear like I wouldn't be upset about that but if Alex came home and had like an entire sleeve done and it was all about whatever, you know, like, I, I think I would have an issue with that. I think I'd be like, did you not feel like you could even talk to me first before you sat at a tattoo, you know, artist parlor or wherever for hours on end and got this worked out? Like, you didn't even want to tell me about that? Like, you know what I mean? I think there was a, a piercing involved, too, if I remember correctly. But, um, yeah. I've had a lot of friends of mine that have had work done, you know, and we call it work. Isn't that so funny? Um, I've had a lot of friends of mine that have had, you know, cosmetic procedures, whether it's their breasts or their lips. I, I'm I'll, When people ask me, I'm always like, be really care careful around the face because if you mess it up, you can't change it back, you know, like... Um, like, people that get, like, ju like Juvederm and all that stuff in their lips. I mean, it is it is what it is. But I've literally had friends of Alex's, and I think we've all seen him on The Real Housewives and stuff like that. Not his friends, but, like, people like this. It is so hot in this car. Who, um... They start getting, like, the Juvederm and stuff. And back in the day, it was silicone lip injections. Do you remember that? I think it was really dangerous, so maybe. I don't know. But, um... And they just go overboard. Like, it's all overboard to the point where was at the end of the camera again I didn't know that I've been talking that long where it's like everybody that gets it done starts looking kind of similar you know what I mean like they start kind of looking the same oh my god that little dog was running so she had him on a leash and she was jogging and he, he was like one of those wiener dogs and he was like hopping along he was so cute little puppy um but um I just had the weirdest thought I was like I would have one of those dogs like I haven't seen anybody that's had one of the like, dachshund like, what we call them, little wiener dogs. I think they're so cute. Anyway, um, my dad's fraternity brother that we used to go visit, he and his wife and kids in Sarasota, Florida. I do not remember what their dog's name was, but they had a dachshund. I cannot remember what its name was, but we used to always talk about it. Um, yeah, like I think anybody should have the right to do what they want to do. And I, I would say the majority of my friends have had something. You know, I mean, real in all honesty, the majority of my friends have had something done. Um, I used to want to get a nose job. I don't know why. And my dad, like, really, really discouraged me. I mean, like, that started when I was in high school. And he and I would say, I want to get a nose job. And he'd say, no, you don't. And I would say, yeah, I do. And he'd say, no, you don't. And I'd say, why? And he'd say, because it'll completely change the way that you look. And he was like, and you don't want that. And he would say, you know, you want to embrace your physicality of how you look differently than everybody else. And I, it what's really interesting about this is my dad, who is a cosmetic surgeon, that's not the only thing he did. He was in hand, like he started his, his specialty is in hand reconstruction. Um, but he was also a facial and cosmetic plastic surgeon. So um, he as somebody that was a cosmetic surgeon and one of the first cosmetic surgeons in Indianapolis, he wasn't somebody that really like pushed it. Like whenever I would say stuff, you know, he'd be like, yeah, you don't need that or you don't want that or whatever, you know, like um, as knowledgeable as he was and as interested and exciting, excited as he was in it for a long time, um, you know, but also I think that my dad's way of getting into it was different than like a lot of cosmetic surgeons. You know, my dad got into it um, by starting off doing like kids that had cleft palates and burn victims. And so his cosmetic surgery was a lot of how to do like skin grafting and um, I actually did a science project where my dad like showed what skin grafting was. But anyway, you know, that was a lot of what he did. So the cosmetic surgery was for people that had had these issues and to help them feel better about themselves again. It wasn't, you know, necessarily, what is going on? It is so hot in here. 
it wasn't just like getting your lips done or your nose done or whatever, which he's never been, my dad was never negative about that stuff. He just was like, to me, he'd be like, you don't need it, you know? Um, so, yeah. Now today, I think like if I was going to get anything done today, honestly, I would get like my teeth done. Like, I just think you, like when you see like movie stars and even YouTubers, you know, and stuff that get like veneers and they get their teeth done and they're white. I think there's, you smile differently. Like I'm like, I, I don't love my teeth and I'm not a big smiler anyway. Like when I smile, I always smile with my mouth closed and I always have as a kid. I don't know if that would change. I don't even really know how to smile with showing my teeth in all honesty, but I do think that that is something that I would do differently. Um, or that is something that I would get done, would be my teeth. Like if tomorrow I had a million dollars in the bank, I think I would go get my teeth done. But other than that, I mean, maybe hire a nutritionist. Tanya and I always talk about that. If I had a nutritionist making me three meals a day and took my car keys so I couldn't go out to eat, no, but you know, if I had a nutritionist that I, like, that's how people, like, on those shows, like, Biggest Loser and stuff, like, they do really well, because they're, like, working out all day long, they have a nutritionist, and then they go home, and a lot of them gain weight back, right? Well, it's hard, you know, in the real world, it's hard out in the wild, um, but I think, out in the wild, but I think, you know, um, if you have somebody cooking all your meals, which I think is why meal prepping works really, really well, I don't know. What am I even talking about? Getting older. I told Alex yesterday, he said something, and I, I, he doesn't hear it when I say it, but I said, babe, I said, I like, I don't have a problem getting older. And you know, I have this weird moment where I thought to myself, what's gonna be the age that you like turn where you're like, okay, I have an issue with being turning older this year. Like this is my issue. I think 50 is gonna be hard for me, okay? but. I remember my mom turning, well, she got sober at 51, and I remember my mom at 52 or 53 saying the 50s were her best years of her life. My mother physically looked better in her 50s than she did in her 30s because of drinking. And no lie. I mean, she had lost so much weight. My mother looked so good. She was having the time of her life. She, her 50s were her best years. My dad loved his 50s. My stepmom and him were traveling. They were all over the world. They were having the best time of their lives. I remember when my dad turned 55 because somebody came and put like 55 of those pink flamingos in his front yard and he kept on referring to himself as double nickels. That was like the time of his life. My dad was running every day. He was working out. I think for me, like 60, 65, if I hopefully make it that far, is going to be really hard for me. You know, my mom died at 64. My grandma died at 67. And I think I'm going to have a real issue with like 60. I think 60, if I'm still here, is going to be hard for me. But I think until then, I'm I'm good to go. You know, like I really do. And I think the next year of my life, I really wanna focus on my health. Pri my priority next year, I want it to be my health. Um, and like this weight that I always say that I'm gonna lose, lose it, getting into shape, you know, eating healthy. I really want my health. I wanna make an investment in my future the next year. I want that to be what my next year of my life is about. Um, and also getting my next book out. That's my two new big goals for 47. And usually when I set a goal, I achieve it. So I think if you dream it, you can achieve it. I think that's from, Oprah, or from uh, I was gonna say Oprah, but Roseanne, an episode where Jackie like sold that stuff in the mall. Did you ever see that episode? Yeah, but like that's my goal for like the next year, you know? But I don't by any means, you know, I joke when I do YouTube videos, I'm the old man of YouTube. Well, I kind of am the old man of YouTube for YouTube, but like, my God, the average age of a YouTuber today is 20. So, you know, I mean, in comparison, but I don't, like, you know, by and large, I don't really think about that stuff. Like, every once in a while, I'll get a comment on my videos, and somebody will be like, you are so old, or shut up, old man, or something like that. Like, not on this channel, really, but like on the drama videos. And I'm just like, it cracks me up, because until they say it, like, they, or they'll say, don't you think you are way too old for this? And I'm like, no, not at all. Like, I think I'm, <laughs> why are you worried about it? Don't worry about it, you know? If I'm 70 and I want to be doing drama videos, I'll be doing drama videos. Don't worry about it. And, um, 
But it kind of cracks me up when people say that because I really don't think like that. I've never been somebody that thought that age should limit you from what you're wanting to do, you know? And, you know, back in the day when I would look at, you know, photographers and uh, musicians and actors and actresses, you know, like the fact that um, Geraldine Page won Best Actress for Trip to Bountiful, you know? She was like 80. It's like 75, 80 when she won that Oscar, you know? It's like, never stop dreaming. We see that all the time with actors, actresses, you know? Um, artists, photographers, you know, all kinds of stuff that they bloom late in life. And they, you know, I, I definitely bloomed late in life. And the fact that I've only been doing YouTube, you guys, I've literally only been on YouTube for three years, okay? My drama channel, less than, and my vlog, two and a half. So when you think about it that way, it's crazy. Like, I haven't even been on YouTube a total of three years yet, right? Except for my booktube channel. I mean, I filmed crazy videos back in the day that, just stupid videos, but like my commitment, like the actual start date was May 11th, 2000 and... 16 that was my booktube channel the following September was when I like really started with the drama video it's like my first drama video was uh, September 1st so you know when I think about it that way it's like my life has changed so drastically in just under three years I can't even imagine what my life is gonna look like five years from now the opportunities you know the things I'm gonna do I mean I'm so excited for my life just living it you know, and I think that birthdays are a great reminder of that. And today is my husband's birthday. Happy 35th. But, um, so everybody go wish my husband a happy birthday today. I'll put this vlog up. Well, I keep on forgetting this is the vlog that's going to be up on Saturday today. But this was Friday's vlog, so don't get confused. Or it'll be tomorrow's up tomorrow. But anyway, um, you know, my birthday is next Saturday. Oh, my God. So, anyway, um. Yeah, but I think it is something to celebrate. I think life is worth celebrating, you know? And I think that we don't as much as we should. We take it for granted. And I say this on, like, my Peterisms videos all the time, which are a good reminder for me. You know, I always say, you know, like, this is not a dress rehearsal. And, uh, you know, we, I need, that's why I read my daily meditations every day, because I need reminders of ways to live. And I need to be reminded that life is short and not to take each day, for, you know, not to take any days for granted and wake up and not just on the birthdays, not just on Christmas, not just on vacations, but to wake up every day and be like, okay, I'm exchanging a day of my life for this today. What do I want today to look like? And so with that, I'm going to end my vlog and I'm going to start that being what I think about when I get off here. I'm going to listen to a little calming music, maybe a little Bob Dylan this morning. And it's beautiful outside. It's a little chilly. It says it's 64 degrees, but it is beautiful outside. And um, I'm going to get off here now. And um, I hope you guys have a blessed day. I hope you have an amazing... I keep on saying it's Saturday. It's Friday. I hope you have an amazing Friday, unless you have other plans. Um, but don't. Don't take for day, today for granted. You're exchanging a day of your life for it. Make the most of it. And... Um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Love you.